Hey, hello, how are you? And welcome back to Dream Daddy. I spot Joseph chatting with the guy from Death G Gotham Beyond by the grill. I wonder what they're talking about. I'll walk over to them. Mm. So I'm curious, can you walk me through why you had your house painted black? Mm. Where do I even start? The house stays warmer in the winter. It provides an artistic contrast to the rest of the neighborhood, and it complements the crimson interior perfectly. Mm. It's definitely an interesting choice. Oh! Thank you. I'm very proud of my abode. Mm. Daddy, I was just having a conversation with Damien here about his aesthetic design decisions. Damien regards me up and down with a warm but critical eye. Ah. How do you do? I don't believe I've had the pleasure. I think I saw you in Dead Gods and Beyond the other day. Damien's face turns bright red. I must apologize for my behavior on that day. You see, I take the goth lifestyle very seriously, and to be caught in a ruse by such a corporation as Dead Goth and Beyond was profoundly frustrating indeed. I hope you know that while my anger may have been justified, it was no such a way for a gentleman to act. It's okay, man. Hmm. Do tell me about yourself. Are you new to the area? Yes, my daughter and I just moved in the other day. She was the one I took to Dead Goth and Beyond. Hmm. Very good taste on her part. Does she partake in the goth lifestyle? I think for a second, I look over to Amanda, who's hanging out with some of the older kids in the neighborhood. Oh. Hey, Amanda! Would you consider yourself goth? Amanda yells back. I wouldn't necessarily try to fall under anyone specific label, but if I guess if I had to choose, I would more describe myself as a tw as twee hipster with some norm core leanings. Bats are cool, though. Ah. Ah, pity. Are you enjoying the party so far? Oh, definitely. Thanks so much for putting this on. It's nice to be in a cul-de-sac where everyone is so friendly and welcoming. Yeah. Amanda walks up to the conversation. Hey. I also like The Lost Boys a lot. Really good movie. Does that count as God? Ah. That it would, my dear. I don't believe we've had the pleasure of meeting. Damien Bloodmarch at your service. What a nice name. Bloodmarch. Bloodmarch. It sounds like a World of Warcraft expansion. Blood March. Coming soon. To computer near your demon. Finishes the sentence with a flourish and a bow, producing a single rose and offering it to Amanda. Hey. Amanda blushes and returns the gesture with a curtsy. Ah. Oh. My, do you know how to treat a lady? What? Hello, Amanda. Seemingly out of nowhere, Joseph's twin kid, uh, kids, twin kids appear. Ah, uh, are they speaking in unison? Ah. Uh, hey, won't you come play with us? Hmm. Uh, uh, come play with us forever. Huh. Guys, enough of the creepy twin shtick. We've talked about this. Yeah. Christian and Christy slowly back away. Where do you think they got it from? Uh. Mary pops into the conversation, wine in hand. Duh. I uh, don't know. Mary takes a long sip of the wine. Oh my god. <laughs> I think I might have taped over a Veggie Tales VHS with the shining. Who knows? She takes another sip of her wine. Hmm. Where's Krish? Give it a rest, buddy. Ugh. <laughs> Isn't he with you? Yeah. You had him a moment ago. <sighs> He's probably stuffing dirt in his mouth. He'll be alright. Toddlers are pretty resilient. Mary tips her glass to me. Mm. Ain't my first time to the rodeo. It's my fourth. Ugh. I've squeezed four little... Ugh. Sweetheart, would you do me a favor and find Trish, please? That'd be great. Oh, my God. I'm sure he's fine. Yeah. Mary. Ah. Okay, jeez. Mary finishes her wine and wanders off. Dad, can we go now? Huh. Ah, Lucy. Have I introduced you to Donnie yet? Hey, it's that punk from Amanda's school. Oh, yeah, that's true. I remember you. Whatever. Huh. That's no way for a young man to speak to his elders. Be polite. Lucian bows. Whatever. Sir. Lucian bows again. Mr. Christensen, may I have a veggie burger, sir? 
Coming right up, bud. Are you vegetarian? Yep. Make that too, veggie burgers. Did you know that some people in the Victorian area were vegetarians? They described carnivorous type people as blood lappers. Dad. Yeah. That's really interesting, Damien. Joseph turns to the girl. Just a hint of a tattoo peeks out from under his sleeve. Oh, I can't believe I didn't notice it before. It looks like the bottom of an anchor. Oh. Whoa, is that a tattoo? <laughs> yep, I wasn't always a youth pastor, you know. That's so cool. Want to see mine? Aye. What? Lucian pulls back some rubber bracelets, revealing a lopsided 666 six, six in black ink. Oh, boy. My buddy gave me a stick and poke tattoo last week. I think it's healing up pretty good. Lucian. <sighs> dot, dot. We'll talk about this later. Hey. Ah. That's pretty cool. What's, it, what's the significance of the tattoo? I don't know. I just thought it looked sick. Uh. Well, in my opinion, the only reason you need to get a tattoo is because you want one. Careful, though. That number carries weight. Man, Joseph is a way cooler youth pastor than I thought. I just figured youth pastors popped out of the womb with the Bible. I wonder what he did before preaching. Without further ado, let's work some magic. Joseph closes his eyes, takes a deep breath, and gets to work. With the greatest of ease, he sets patties on the grill, flourishing as he flips his spatula in the air. It's easily some of the best grill work I've ever seen. Do you guys think this, this is my first time in front of a grill? He's working faster now, effortlessly tossing cheese onto patties and perfectly grilling onions on the side. One after another, the dads take notice and crowd around Joseph to admire his masterful technique. Oh. Probably didn't know this, Donnie, but Joseph's known around here for his grummanship. Yeah. He was unbelievable. Hey. I've tried to get on his level, but I just can't catch up. Hey. Let's <laughs> keep studying. It's a rare quality about him. Mm. Mustard, we talk you talking about this? Can't we just appreciate the artist? Hey. I've never seen him make a mistake. Hey! Okay, we need to stop. This is getting too cheesy. Aww. Please stop! All of the children at the party boo the glorious display of puns in unison. Yeah. Alright, guys. The food's ready. Please form an orderly barbecue. Amanda groans. We all grab our food and hang out, enjoying perfectly cooked cheeseburgers. Hey. Man, it's so wild how all of us dads live in the same cul-de-sac. Hey. Kinda nice, isn't it? Feels like there's a real community here. Totally helps when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. Oh. We're happy to have you here, man. I think you're gonna like this neighborhood a lot. Oh. Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all the kids. If she decides to get into the babysitting game, she'll make a killing. Oh. Hey, why don't you add us all on Dad Book? Dad Book? Dad, <laughs> dad Book? Oh. Yeah, it's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with each other. We're all on it, so if you ever need to reach out to anyone, that's the simplest way to do it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just an old-fashioned dad. Social media goes over my head sometimes. <laughs> Don't worry, Pops, I'll help you figure it out. The rest of the barbecue goes snorkelly. We all trade stories and drink beer as our kids play on the lawn. Amanda breaks up a fight between Carmen Sita and those weird twins. I think they wanted her soul. Oh, welcome to the neighborhood. Amanda and I walk back to our place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. <laughs> Pretty fun party, don't you think? Hmm. Wish I could play. Wish I could have been playing paranormal ice road truckers. You and Daisy seemed like you were having a way better time than I was. All right. Because we were. Hmm. Well, hey, at least you met some other cool dads. You should hit them on Dad Book. Hit them on Dad Book. Maybe I will, if I ever figure out how social media works. I have a good feeling about this place. Me too, Dan. A bird in the hand is better than... Whoops. Amanda and I arrive home with the remnants of our veggie plate. Hmm. Seems like nobody was really into the cauliflower. Any big plans for this evening? Actually, yeah. I'm going out with some friends. Oh. Hmm. Is that okay? Of course. Just keep me posted and be home before midnight. Hmm. You got it. And be careful. I will. Make good choices. Mm -hmm. Of course. And call me if you need anything. 
Dad, you're not going to do the thing where you wait silently for me to come home in the living room with all the lights off, are you? What? No! I've never done that, and I never will do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have plans tonight? I, uh... My plans were kind of eat ice cream. <laughs> my plans were kind of to eat ice cream and watch TV with Amanda, but I'll find something to do. I'm gonna... Uh, let's see how long I can sleep for a throw party. Throw party! A real rager. All the other dads in the neighborhood are invited. I'll see if I can get you a spot on the list, but honestly, it's looking tight. You may just have to wait in line. I know the guy at the door. I'll get in. No problem. I'm just relaxing tonight. Have fun, okay? Great! See you later! I watch Amanda drive off into the night. I really do hope she has fun. I plop down in front of the TV and turn on some wine and dine mastermind with celebrity chef Gavin Chapman. Looks like Gavin's making a roasted rack of lamb with rosemary mashed potatoes. Oh, 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 so good. I'd love to be able to cook like that. Although, I think if I was actually good at cooking, I'd use my powers for evil. Like just making baked Alaskas all day instead of any food of real nutritional substance. Man, Gavin Chapman just caught that thing on fire, but he meant to do it. What a professional. I lose track of time as I blaze through several episodes of Wine and Dine Mastermind and also on one episode of some cooking show called Meat Hell. Meat Hell. I'm not even sure what that one was about. It was just a lot of yelling. I glance at my watch. Man, it's almost midnight. I should check in with Amanda. I send a text. Hey, kiddo, you good? I wander into the kitchen as I wait for a reply. Amanda's phone is almost always in her hand, so I'm sure she'll respond soon. Unless she's driving home now, in which case I hope she doesn't respond soon because I definitely taught her better than to text and drive. Remember, kids, don't text and drive. I reach into the freezer and grab an ice cream sandwich. It's a little late for this, but I think I earned it after a long day of socializing. I check my watch again. And then my phone. Nothing yet. Hmm. Okay, see, now I'm worried. Do I call her? Do I call the cops? No, no, it's too soon for that. I'll just send her a gentle reminder text. What's up? Half an hour passes. Now I'm really worried. The episodes of Gavin Sheepman's Meat Hell are not only a, a sage, only not assaging my anxiety, but possibly exasperating it with all the yelling. So I keep pacing around the house, waiting for her to come back. Why didn't I find out where she, where she was going? Who was she even with? Why don't I know any of her friends' phone numbers? Why don't I even know any of her friends' phone names? Who is Emma P? I decide to send her another text. Amanda, please text me and let me know you're okay. I can't help but think of all the awful things that could have happened to her. Oh, thank God it's her! Amanda opens the door and shuffles in. Finally, finally, she's back home. I'm glad she's okay. Sup? Sweetie, thank God you're safe. Ugh. Uh, yup. Yeah. Da, 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 da. But now that I know she's okay, I'm really mad. Why didn't you answer my text? Amanda pulls her phone out of her pocket. Huh. Oh, whoops. Guess I didn't see those. She starts to walk to her room. Amanda Ann! Hmm. Whoa, we're pulling out the middle name now? Amanda, you came home an hour and a half after your curfew and you didn't respond to any of my texts. You really freaked me out. I was about to call the cops. Hmm. Dad, you're seriously overreacting. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? Hmm. I was kidding. You weren't responding and it was just... I, it was just like when your mom... I have to stop myself from tearing up. Oh. Hey. Oh, Dad. I didn't mean to. I sit down on the couch and put my head in my hands. I feel very tired all of a sudden. You really scared me. Just please don't do that again. Mm. <sighs> all right. I'm going to go to bed now. Amanda closes the door to her room and I had to mine. Oh. I think this is the sad note is where we will leave it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I did. If you did and want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification too. Like, comment if you feel like doing it. Hope you have a great day and I hope to see you again next time. Thanks everyone. Bye.